Hey guys, my name is Jesse Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, our tribe conquered the balance test that may have been sent to us by the balance sisters themselves. On the day of the storm, they sent a balance bear over here to check up on our tribe, and thankfully, since we have plenty of strength on our paws, we were able to take it down and claim the reward. 30 pieces of food means we have three days of safety to work with. So I was wondering if maybe it would be a good idea for our tribe to regroup. We do have a very long stretch of peace in front of us after all, so it might be the best opportunity for our tribe to gather together again. Not only that, but some members of the tribe still need a little bit of healing, and they also have some babies to have too. Raven is looking for a place to set up her nest so she can finally raise her baby with new Kiro. Though unfortunately for her, she did attract the attention of a rogue male, so we weren't able to adjust the traits of this baby as much as we wanted to. It's going to be left into the hands of fate, and that means that it's probably going to have a few unfavorable traits. The no paws that the rogue males are so well known for, and potentially some sickness too. But the one silver lining, in an odd sort of way, is that we might actually see the blind eyes on this baby. That would be good for us because it does increase the smelling skill, so it would allow us to find the roots more easily. So if Hawthorne is truly after some sort of buried treasure, I think he would probably want that creature on his side too. So let's have everybody regroup again, maybe at the ports? I mean, the bluebird is over here, so that's probably where it's trying to guide us, and I know for sure that Marina is going to want to follow it no matter what. That could be another good source of food after all. So maybe we could have Flurry and Jangle come together to keep each other warm. We'll have them huddle right around Raven, actually. We could bring Jangle up here, have him settle down right at her side, and he could even knock down this barrier between them and the shore. And let's just make sure that that rogue male isn't getting a little bit too curious. I don't see him right now, but he was awfully smitten by our warriors before. I don't think Lightning is too interested though, so if he comes knocking on her door, she is definitely going to send him packing. Let's have Flurry settle down right here between all of her friends. I think for the most part, she's going to try to stay right by Raven's side now. It's been far too long since these sisters were together again. So I think we should be ready to skip the day. All the dangers are far behind us, but while the rogue male might be gone, it seems like new Kiro has also disappeared. Oh, another bluebird. Oh my gosh, right over your head again, Marina. Unfortunately, it looks like it might be in like this tile right here, so just a little bit too far away for you to actually swipe at. But gosh, you have been so lucky with the bluebird spawns recently. I wonder if that's something that Mianna is watching from a distance. I mean, she must be curious. She's heard all of these stories about her great big sister, with the wings to conquer any bluebird in the skies. And she's also been given some strict instructions to pass these bluebird feathers onto her, because while she found them in her nest, they were never technically hers to take. Mianna is just something of a messenger, though I do have to wonder if she's not completely happy with her role in the tribe. We're expecting that she's just going to pass those bluebird feathers on peacefully, just because that's what her deceased mother told her to do. But with the way that she looks so connected to Adam himself, and perhaps even with the way that she is connected to Flurry with those strange colors of hers, I wonder if these two are going to concoct a little scheme of their own. Maybe Flurry is too deeply rooted in tradition. I mean, the oracles in general are very connected to the ancestors. And with her connection to the deities as well, maybe she's just not sure that Marina is up for the job. She doesn't look at anything like an ancestor of Adam after all. So I think there might be more to that story yet. But before anything else, we have to make sure that she can land a few good attacks on this bluebird. She's the only one who can attack them now, since she's the only one with the double wings. It's too bad that Miana here didn't inherit that second wing, but at least she could find us a couple of roots out here somewhere. Unfortunately, I don't see any new roots out here either. Yeah, honestly, Hawthorne, you're probably getting a little bit worried about the state of the roots over here, aren't you? Let's have them turn back. We'll go back for the ports. I mean, it looks like this whole place has snowed over again anyways, so maybe something has spawned there in the meantime. So let's have Jangle scoot his way down to the shore, 
That should help light up a little bit more space for Marina to attack this bluebird too. Oh, it is so, so close. Just one more turn and maybe you can land your first attack. We could have Raven scoot down here. I wonder if she could even build her nest right on the shore. And surely you can attack the bluebird now. Oh my gosh, swooping down right next to your little sister. I kind of wonder if she even realizes that she's related to Miana though. I mean, more like she's probably too distracted to even take notice of her. If she saw those bluebird feathers, of course she would be suspicious. But I'd imagine she probably has her eyes locked right on the bird right now. So maybe this is still a good opportunity for Miana to take her leave. And in fact, she could scoot right in the shadow of Flurry, who she feels that strange connection to. Oh my gosh, and if only we had just a one more turn. I really hope this bluebird isn't going to fly off somewhere else. It seems to be going up toward our other tribe mates though. So as long as it still stays in the light, we should be okay. Now I don't see that rogue male out here either. So maybe now is our best chance to move. We'll slide Raven right down to the beaches where it should be nice and toasty warm. And you can build your nest right here. Though maybe first we should actually try to alter her mutation menu a little bit. I mean, I'm not really sure what we could place in here to override the rogue male's traits. Most of them are probably just a lost cause. But we could try to weasel some inactive traits into this baby that could help us in the future. Something like that ticking chunk, of course, which is going to be very, very important as we move on. More of our families really need to keep that in their line. Then I suppose we could always try the digging paw? That way they would have at least something to contribute to us. Because as it is right now, if Raven passes her wing, or if she even passes the Velvet Bomb, it's really not going to help us in the long run. Either that or the Ram Horns or the Megalosaurus Horns. Is Raven carrying any horns in her inactive traits? She has the Ram Horns, okay. So instead, let's go with the Digging Palm. Maybe we'll get lucky and we'll see some sort of horns on them regardless. So go ahead and build your nest right here. And then we'll probably want to scoot Jangle aside. That way Flurry can settle down right next to your side. Because I'm sure you're going to promise to keep an eye on her baby too. Just want to make sure that rogue male isn't getting too curious again. Yeah, I actually don't see them at all. It's very suspicious. It almost makes me wonder if maybe Nukiro has run them off. Because I don't see him either. And I also don't see any skeletons out here. That has me worried too. Can you imagine if Raven finally has her baby for them to raise and he just ends up passing away? That would be pretty heartbreaking. Well, Flurry, let's have you settle down right here. And you should be ready to welcome this new baby into the world. Oh, wait a second. Oh my gosh, we do have roots down here right next to the ports again. That might be one of the very same roots that Hawthorne's ancestors dug up before. His father, his mother... Yeah, it seems like it's definitely a good idea for us to turn you around. I guess you had the right idea after all. So let's see how far we can take you on this turn. I know that Hawthorne is a little bit slower than some other creatures because of his unique set of skills. His digging might be great, but he's really hard at getting around. So maybe that's part of how he's convincing this entire group to turn around and go back. He might voice his concerns to his sister, that they really need a larger group of treasure hunters to conquer the rest of this mountain. And I'm not sure if he's ever crossed paths with Raven. I can't quite remember if he saw her before she skittered on down to the shores. But I suppose that Ranger might feel that distant pull. Raven is kind of like the other half of the Balance Sisters to her. And we knew that greatness was going to come if only these two could cross paths. If only they could join forces and melt the snow together. So maybe it is time that she joined up with Raven after all. But first, I do want to make sure that Maple purrs for her, because she still has a little bit of damage to melt away too. Oh my gosh, actually, how fitting. I think those two are the only creatures right now who have actually taken damage. So maybe that's part of what's pulling her in this direction, and part of what would also have her pull Maple in that direction, too. She knows that the other half of this operation needs some help. And there's our rogue male friend. Alright. 
How are we going to set this up so we don't scare him away, but so Lightning can take a good swipe? If we move her right here... Good, he's not going to breed with her on this turn. Okay, I was a little bit worried. Yeah, go ahead and send this guy packing. He's just going to be a nuisance for the rest of our turns here, and we're already having one of his babies. Gosh, though, doesn't that make Lightning seem a little bit ruthless? A little bit cold-hearted. I mean, really, she's just not interested, and she is not here to play games. She has a tribe to protect. And perhaps more importantly, she has a Earth Prince to protect, too. So I guess the farthest we can bring him is right about here. Unless we have him set up on this tile. Would we want him to cut his way all the way through these snow drifts or not? I mean, I guess if we brought him down here, at least he could sniff a little bit deeper into the snow for us. Though it looks like that might be the only route that we're sensing right now. Unless maybe something else pops up in the next turn. And you know, with Ranger's heat body, we might be able to move her a bit deeper into the snow too. If we could have somebody dig out the way for her, I guess it would have to be lightning, but it looks like there's not very many places for her to go. We could have her settle down right here, that way she'd be able to keep Maple warm too, no matter where she ends up. And Ranger can do her best to follow. And after that, I think we're just left down to you, Mihana. You and the Bluebird. Oh, that must be so frustrating for you, knowing that you can't just leap up into the sky like your sister. I mean, I guess we could have her follow the Bluebird to the best of her ability. Oh my gosh, is it actually going away from you? Interesting. Almost as if it knows your plans. Well, this is definitely a good setup. While Marina is still going to be pretty cold on the next turn. Oh my gosh, hopefully she doesn't freeze. Well, at least your little sister is right next to you. Though hopefully we won't have another repeat of the Ancient Legends Challenge, where we end up leaving her out in the snow. Oh my gosh, three birds? Oh my gosh, what is happening? Oh, either the ancestors are very, very angry with you, and they want to teach you some sort of lesson. Or they just want to make sure that we're staying right here by the ports. Because as long as all these birds are here, we are not leaving these shores anytime soon. I guess they approve of our idea of making sure that we have a safe pathway to get here, just in case things go really, really south. So I didn't see any new roots out here either. Yeah, nothing new has spawned, unfortunately, but that's okay. We have a nice, big, juicy bluebird right over our head. Oh, there we go, another feast. And just in time, too, with this new baby. Now we don't have to worry about scrambling to find a way to feed her, but you can bet that Marina is going to dart off down the shore in no time. So a little spark of wonder might enter Miana's mind, wondering if she should truly pass those bluebird feathers after all. But Marina, hyper-focused as she is, is already flying off to some distant shore to follow the brand new bluebird that has popped up in its place. She is going to be one very hard creature to pin down. Now let's go ahead and see if maybe this baby was lucky enough to inherit some of those traits that we were hoping for. I see that she does have the digging paw at least, so that's a good sign. At least our tribe can't claim that she has no way to contribute, despite her lack of blind eyes. It's kind of strange to think that that's what we were hoping for. But I don't know, maybe her line could even give us a group of blind creatures? That's another thing that we were trying to breed into our tribe during the Ancient Legends Challenge, because I figured it would be a good way for us to find food, and maybe even on different islands, a good way for us to find those healing fruits too. So that is another potential strategy that we could look toward, as long as we find her a good, suitable partner. Now as far as her name goes, since we've kind of lost track of Nukiro, Honestly, I am getting so worried about him. I wonder how close to the... Oh! To the end of his lifespan he was? Oh, the poor thing, he's so cold out here. But it looks like he does still have a few good days left on him. Thank goodness, maybe he'll make it back to the tribe after all. If you guys could lead him in this direction, that would probably be for the best. But yeah, as far as her name goes, I was actually thinking that maybe Raven could name her in his honor. And we'll call this little baby Kiara. I guess it reminds me of what could be a more feminine version of Nukiro. So now that we have another little digger on our hands, let's see if we can find those roots. Let's see if we can have Hawthorne carve his way through the snow. Yeah, since we've already melted some of the snow right here, I guess we should probably bring him this way. 
We'll have him dig out some of the snow drifts so Ranger can really lead him through this time. Ah, and she found some more roots too. Excellent, so there's more out here than what meets the eye. We'll have you settle down right here, and I'm sure that you're going to be able to dig up that root in the next turn. In fact, if we play our cards right, I wonder if we could even dig it up on this turn instead. Go ahead and dig out the snow drift for us. Yes, there's a one more root in the bag. Oh no! Oh, I thought he had an extra turn. Okay, so the next turn we are going to have another feast. Our little bluebird buddies are dancing over here. Putting on an aerial show for us. I guess they really want our attention. And you know with that in mind, let's make sure that we're bringing our other heat-bonded individual, Raven herself, deeper into the snowdrifts. If they want us to go this way, we should probably listen, but we're going to need some help in order to do so. So Jangle, go ahead and clear out some of the snow for us, and we could have Raven hopefully hop our way inside. It's going to be a little bit difficult for you to make your way around all of your family, I guess. But at least you know that Flurry is going to keep your baby very, very safe. In fact, this might even give her a good opportunity to speak to you, Marina, as you have taken on your very final gem. Now would be the time for her to instill the Oracle's wisdom upon you. Let you know just how connected to the spirit she really is. And if the spirits didn't want you to become the next Bluebird leader, would they have truly given you so many of these fantastic traits? Oh, new Kiro, you made it to your family. Oh my goodness, he's finally here to see his little baby. That is too sweet. If only we can open up a pathway for him. I mean, we don't want him to get to those roots, but at the same time, I do want him to see his daughter before he passes. Well, we have to leave Flurry right there, and unfortunately, it looks like she won't be able to pick up any of these flowers. She was never truly connected to the flowers anyways. She holds a far deeper connection to the oceans in a strange way, because that's where the Balance Sisters hold influence. So we'll just let you stay there for now. And maybe you could even try your hand at picking up some of these piranha fish in the water, if one gets a little bit closer. She won't be able to scoop them up with ease, of course. The Baryena Claw isn't the best for fishing. But maybe the Balance Sisters will sprinkle a little extra luck on her. Especially because she's been such a loyal follower. Now with our last turn going to Jangle, I am starting to wonder if we should maybe have him breed with Marina before it's too late before she goes soaring off back into the skies to some distant shore, searching for the bluebirds once more. They are actually some of the only creatures on this island who are truly compatible, who we wouldn't have to worry about a sick baby with. So I feel like we should probably breed them too, which is kind of strange if you think about it. He was the father to Miana after all. But he's one of our last two remaining males on the island, so I guess it's safe to say that he just has a thing for birds. Maybe he's sick of his family being stuck in the sea like this. No more gills for him. He wants to take to the skies just like the great Miana. So his mutation menu is definitely already taken care of. We even have the wing in here so it's even more fitting. We have the digging trunk in his second slot. So I guess we could try to bring that out of Marina? She has the bird beak in her inactive traits which also gives us digging, but the smelling is terrible. So while it might help us dig up those roots, it certainly wouldn't help us find them. Not as well as our earth spirits. And then I guess we might as well try to weasel those Megaloceros horns into your babies too. Well, I'd imagine it might be a little bit hard to fly with those giant horns on your head. It would certainly help us with the bluebird situation. That should make it even faster for us to take down those birds and put the feast in our pocket. So let's use your last turn to breed with Marina. And now she is carrying a baby too. She doesn't have to have her baby right away. We can wait a little while for her to place down her nest. But at least we have some sort of reassurance that our bluebird warriors will live on. I guess it is kind of fitting that she would end up having such a quick short fling like this. Like mother like daughter, I guess. Maybe her children are going to end up following in her footsteps if they gather as many admirers as she did. To be honest, there haven't really been as many love stories on this mountain as usual. Most of these pairings have just been out of necessity, so she probably doesn't even figure this is anything out of the ordinary. Our most tight-knit family is without a doubt the Earth Spirits, 
so I'm sure that when Hawthorne settles down, he's going to be a little bit more picky about who he takes as his lifetime partner. But you don't really have time for that right now, do you, Hawthorne? You have so many roots to dig up. Let's have you grab this one, this one over here, and then I'm pretty sure that I actually saw another one down here too. Yeah, right next to you, Raven. Do you think maybe this is the buried treasure that he was always seeking? Oh my gosh, and we have roots up here now too? Right next to the skeleton of the rogue male. Well, I guess if we wanted to set his remains to rest, then at least we have that opportunity now. Now, as far as the bluebirds go, it looks like they might be trying to escape. So it's probably for the best if Marina goes north. Oh, Nukiro. You just want to see your baby, don't you? Well, the birds are far enough away that we could probably scoot these creatures around a little bit. But I do still want to make sure that Flurry is right next to the nest. So, Miana, you could meander down the shore, too. The opposite shore to your little mentor, because you have quite a bit of thinking to do, don't you? And I guess for all time's sake, we could actually have Lightning try to light the way toward the bluebirds. If she comes over here, she might be able to light up just enough space for Miana to attack. I'm getting a little bit worried that these bluebirds might start despawning soon, because I'm sure some of them are pretty old. So you know, just one more hit might actually do the trick. Oh, we want to make sure that Maple comes down here to heal Raven, too. Oh, that pull that you two felt before, it must be stronger than ever. Let's have Ranger skitter her way to the side. She can open up this little gate right here, and then you two can finally meet without any balance bears getting in the way. We'll bring Maple right in between you both, and she should be able to purr for you both, too. So now, all of that damage that you took is finally going to melt away, and your warmth is going to be greater than ever with both of you standing side by side. So this era of peace has brought our tribe plenty of good things. I was a little bit worried that having such a long stretch in between our storms would be a hindrance, but to be honest, it seems like it's brought us more food than ever before. So I wonder if maybe the Balanced Sisters are going to test us again? Maybe each of those storms is going to be a new test, with a brand new danger involved. They just want to make sure that our tribe is never straying too far from their goal, and they're never straying too far from their family either. It makes me glad that Hawthorne decided to turn back after all, if not just for the food that we found, but just to ensure that everybody is sticking together like this. It'll be even easier for him to get to those roots if he has the entire tribe working together. And that being said, since the bluebirds don't seem too interested, let's have Lightning stay back here to mark off this route. That way we're not going to forget about it, and we can make sure that Hawthorne skitters right on up here to pick it up on the next turn. So Marina, come on down here. You can stay nice and toasty warm between our two heat bodies, and maybe the birds will be easier to reach on the next turn. Oh, I should have used that turn to build the nest. That would have been perfect for these two to raise their own. Oh, she had just enough time, too. Well, we can't take that turn back, but I guess we could still have her plant down her nest on the next turn. It just depends where the next night takes us. Miana is really going to have to prove herself in the next episode, too, because if she truly plans to keep the bluebird feathers to herself, she'll have to prove that she's right for the job, and not just because our oracle says so. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!